Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Harry Singer Foundation's Empowering Women Show. And yes, we have another, another amazing, amazing, amazing guest for this episode. Now this amazing, amazing soul is a dear friend of mine, but I just want to make sure that you get to, like always, just get a flavor of who they are. So today's guest is the amazing Linda Atram. Now Linda Atram is speaker, author, mentor, businesswoman, and so many other things as you're finding out on the Empowering Women Show, right? As a guy, it's not for me to tell you how many amazing things that women are doing, right? But let's give you a little bit more of a flavor of the, the achievements, the success that this person has achieved in the, in the years so far. So she is a best-selling author, and she'll tell you a little bit about that book in a second. And I also want you to be aware that she has been a successful businesswoman for over 20 years, predominantly in property and she has like a million over a million pound portfolio of business and properties and so on there but she's also got history in hr so we're going to find out about what got her to where she is and what she does now but also on top of that she's the leader of a, a community of business women in accra in ghana on top of that as well she created a platform for mothers in business and we're definitely going to be talking about mothers in business today and she is check this she's a martial artist you don't mess with this woman right she's the second dan black belt as well now think about that for a second you know being a mom being a business owner doing all and then being a martial artist it takes a, a lot of discipline a lot of commitment a lot of drive so one of the real beautiful things about this lady is she's consistent and authentic and you're going to find that in a second on top of that she was awarded the global woman exceptional award in 2020 so she's that current award winner for that and i always leave it right to the end but it's definitely not the least she's mum to three precious diamonds and it's been an honor for me to see those diamonds grow and glow and shine just through you know linda and mac and how they raise these amazing diamonds and her mission her mission is to inspire and empower women globally to be more and achieve more. Without further ado, let's bring on Linda. Thank you for taking the time out today and joining us here. Hi, Harry. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's it's an absolute honor. Really looking forward to this interview. Brilliant. Did you enjoy the introduction there? You're like, saying, well, that's me. Right? Fab. I was like, who's that? I was like, who's that person? She sounds fab. <laughs> and it's brilliant. And you are. And you know what? Like I do in all of my episodes here. I give people, I want people to know how amazing the guests are, right? But most of the guests that we bring, they're so authentic and it's, you know, being the star and blowing your own trumpet isn't your major thing. And it's, I want to get people to feel who you are. So let's do as we always do. Let's give people a little bit of backstory or, you know, what your journey was to get you to come and stop doing all these amazing things. So please do share. Thank you, Harry. Thank you for the opportunity. So my life has not always been this way. As a young child, I was very shy. I had low self-esteem, low confidence. I had a gap between my teeth, didn't want to smile. I felt like my teeth were going in nautical directions, northeast, south and west. And so that, that made me feel really uncom uncomfortable. And at school, I made some poor decisions because of the way that I looked. I had this desire to want to be popular. So I was hanging around with the wrong sorts of people, focusing on being popular rather than on my education. So I ended up leaving school with very little ed education. I left, I think it was with one, uh, it's called CSC in those days, because I'm a bit of an age. Um, and, and that was in RE. And I had no intentions of being a nun, so that wasn't really going to help me. And um, school I realized you know the error of my ways I realized I had to you know if I wanted to have a career I needed to do something very different but I was still very very shy still wanting to be um, accepted still wanting to be to be liked and so I went back and I re-educated myself and I got my English and my maths qualification and then it was time to to go to college because being a, a woman of colour and the sort of school that I went to, it wasn't expected that you would go to university. That was never on the cards. And the school that I went to, um, the, the headmaster, he actually was murdered outside the school gates. Um, Philip, Philip Lawrence, his, his name was, many, many years ago. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, yeah, 
so a school in, in Maida Vale, that's the school that, that I went to. And so when it came to, you know, going on to college, I thought, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with my life? And I'm the youngest of, of um, four girls. And all of my sisters, they were all in secretarial work. So I just assumed that's what I needed to do. But there was something inside of me saying, I want to do something more, but I didn't know what that was. And I didn't have the confidence to even think about, you know, thinking about something much bigger. So I went to college and did my secretarial uh, course, you know, office, office procedures. And then it was time to go to work. And I don't know, Harry, I don't know how I got through the interview, but I did. I managed to get through an interview and I got my first job with a high fashion retailer, Burberry's and the Scotch House Limited, working in the HR department as an admin assistant. The thing was, though, Harry, you know, I, I love the job, but I did what I needed to do. I did what I was told to do. But when it came to things like socializing or at lunchtime, I just couldn't, I just didn't have the confidence to have conversations with people. And I would actually bring my lunch into work because I was fearful of going into the canteen and having a conversation, thinking that I might say the wrong thing or I might, you know, look stupid or say something stupid. So I'd actually take my lunch and I'd bring it into the toilet cubicle and I'd eat my lunch in there on my own, really, really quickly, scoff it down because I didn't want people outside to think that I was in the toilet for too long and all sorts of nonsense was going, you know, going through my head. And that was a really dark period of time for me because I felt that I was good enough to be employed by somebody, but I just didn't have the confidence to continue that in terms of a social interaction. And what got me out of that was I had a, a boss, her name was Christine, and she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And so as you have your, you know, your um, employer reviews, she would speak to me and she'd talk to me about different opportunities in terms of progressing in HR. And that was one of the very first times when somebody had actually taken some notice and, and attention in terms of me as an individual. And that was very strange for me to mm. sort of accept. Um, but I, I did accept it. I thought, this is a nice sort of warm, fuzzy feeling. Let's just go with it and see <laughs> and see what happens. And so my employer at the time, they sponsored me to do um, a certificate in personal practice, which I did, which was local. And then after that, um, they then sponsored me to do my degree in HR management, which was, you know, mm. absolutely fabulous. And it also, my, my confidence started to build from there because somebody took some attention in me, they could see something that I couldn't see in myself, and they helped me to grow and to blossom. And obviously working in HR, you know, you're, you're working with people. So I, you know, I got exposed to having to work with more and more people, having conversations with people. And I remember when I was doing my, um, my degree, we had to do these presentations. And I remember my mom at the time, she's, she's passed away now, I'd get her, I'd practice in front of her. And I'd say to her, you've got to stare in my eyes. You can't look away. You've got to stare at my eyes. And then she'd not, she'd like momentarily look away. I'm like, no, you've got to look at me all of time. I was so petrified of people just staring. And I had to do this big presentation. So, you know, all of those sort of things helped me to, to, gain, to gain my confidence. And so as I was going through those years, you know, I, I then started, you know, being more social, having friends, started dating, et cetera. And then I, you know, eventually I met Mac, my, my husband, and we got married fairly quickly because we fell in love very quickly, which was lovely. Um, and then we started having children. The thing was that when we first started having children with, with my first daughter, it was great as, as it is, you know, because it's a blessing to be a mother. But I also felt that I, my confidence was starting to go back to what it was before because all of a sudden I wasn't Linda. I was being called mum, 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 or Mac's wife, or um, Tiana's mum, or whoever's mum. And it was like, every time I heard th those words, mum, 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 it was like Linda was being stripped away. And I felt really, really frustrated about that because I'd worked so hard for so many years beforehand to, you know, to move on from that. And here I was back again, a, you know, a married woman, a responsible mum, I should be having the time of my life, shouldn't be worried about my confidence. And that was really, really difficult for me to, to get over. 
And although I had, you know, I've got Matt to talk to, it's not like having another another mother because I thought I was the only one going through that. I thought that, you know, I couldn't cope. I wasn't a good enough mum. And it wasn't until later on, many years later, that I realised that this is something that affects lots of mothers, you know, because it, motherhood doesn't come with a handbook. It doesn't come with a shiny qualification. You just don't know what to do. You just get on with it. You know, you can get advice from other people, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. So I had to, again, do some work um, on myself. But it was it was different this time because I was surrounded with like my I was able to access like minded people so that I could go on to development programs and, and do certain things to to build my my confidence back up because I'd always be in the background. Um, and it's only recently in the last sort of few years that I've had more confidence to sort of come, you know, come more forward and, and to be helping other women in terms of the experience that I've gone through to help them to know that it's okay not to be okay. And it's yeah. it's okay to feel the mum guilt and you know the the isolation and, and things like that because it happens it happens to us all. So before we even get into you know the book and mothers in business and all the things you do now, it's like you know, I wanna I take a breath there on you brought up something amazing that you know I haven't ever heard it put that way before. You know, and and then you eloquently said again, like you know, so many other women, and especially mothers, would experience to to have that thing of you built yourself up, and then you become a mother, and then your identity starts getting shaped as a mother, and it's like it's the mother, and then all these other things that attach to it. And so, first and foremost, you know, for anybody that's listening and watching, especially the women that go, yeah, I know exactly what she's talking about. As a as a guy, I needed to hear it in that way. So, thank you so much for that. And the other part is, you know, the stuck out for me that as you started out you know when you when you know when you even told me before about you know i used to be shy and you know not like those being shy is one thing but going and eating your lunch in a toilet on your own and so on and that's another level of shyness and low self-esteem and all of these things so your journey from there to where you are now is even more amazing and the gift and the nugget in that is it's the that first boss believed in you, that first boss that said, look, I see something in you that gave you that warm, fuzzy feeling. You now get mm -hmm. to be that person that believes in other women, especially mums and those that are in business. So give people a little flavor of, you know, first of all, tell us about the book, how that came about and all the rest of it, or whichever order you want, it's give us a bit on the mums in business, what you do now, how you believe in them, and really give us a flavor of like, you know, their their experiences like you just had so yeah go for it maybe i'm excited to hear that <laughs> thank you so first of all if i tell you a bit about the business that i'm in so i've been in business as you said for over 20 years and my business is in my core business is in property mm -hmm. so i purchase property redevelop them and then rent them out to people that can't afford their own homes and i also build property as well and manage properties for other landlords so quite a lot of plates spinning and when I first started off in, in property, again, the mum guilt came into, into play. It was about, you know, am I being selfish with my husband, you know, building our financial freedom, our, our, you know, building a, a financial vehicle for us to have a better lifestyle instead of going to the park, making cakes, doing whatever you do with the kids. Because there was a period of time where every weekend we would take our kids to these properties that weren't clean, they were dirty because we couldn't afford cleaners. They would sit on this mat with their toys. They weren't allowed to move because I didn't want them touching anything dirty. My eldest daughter had to play mum and I would be painting or cleaning these properties. And I thought absolutely like the worst mum in the world. And, you know, I know that a lot of mothers go through this as well. But the key thing that I want to say to, you know, to your audience, you know, if you're going through this, what you feel, your children don't necessarily feel. Because what I learned many years afterwards, when, I, when my children were old enough to have that conversation and I, and I shared the same story with them, is that they loved it. They actually really enjoyed going out to these properties every weekend yeah. and just watching us work away. And they just sort of like had their, their, whatever, they had their little toys, their books or whatever. 
and they they really enjoyed that so all that guilt that I felt wasn't really necessary but at the time it it felt like it was just such like a big burden on me I would be painting, cleaning, and crying at the same time, thinking, what am I doing? To them, they're having a wild adventure at some new place. So, yeah, amazing. Exactly. So I I used that experience. I used my my 20 years in in business to to help other mothers. And the reason why I do that now is because I've I've built up my confidence. And I feel that, you know, my business is in a place where my staff, who are also mothers, can run the property business for me. I just need to oversee it. But it's my time to to give back and to to help and to serve other women on their journey as well, because I I had quite a significant birthday um, earlier this year, so I'm in the you know the the other half of my life cycle, so to speak, and <laughs> and she's I, 21, and I want... everybody, she's finally become an adult, <laughs> <laughs> and I and I want to make sure that this second half of my life cycle is much more richer than the, the first half in terms of giving and serving. Yeah. And that, that comes from a, a place of a place of love. And I think because I've I've learned how to love myself, which I didn't before, mm. I've learned how to give love and to receive love. And when you have, if you're fortunate enough to have two parents and then they pass away, and which mine have, and you remember the love that you have from from them and the legacy they've left, then all I want to do is just create a great legacy for my children to have great memories, but also at the same time be able to help other women experience, not necessarily what I've experienced, but to their own experience, but you know, create their own magic and make the most out of their life rather than people pleasing, which is what I did a lot for many, many years until I realized it doesn't matter what people think about you, they're gonna think it anyway. You just need to live your life for you and your family. Absolutely, and I definitely our condolences because I know you're losing your parents wasn't that long ago. And I know that their, their light and legacy shines through you. And you, you know, what you said so beautifully, it's, it's what I'm so passionate about, people finding their voice, their energy, finding that energy and then bringing it to a plate of serving from a standpoint of love not significance not this that and the other and you know your, your children your your precious diamonds a testament to that legacy and so you know let's let's move into another part of the session where we you know it's we got linda atram here right so you've had all those years of experience you've got so many women especially like you know um uh, your leader of many communities of women you know over in in God, it's, I, want, I want to get a little bit of flavor of that and then we'll get into one of your tools or strategies that you can give a gift to whether you know it's a woman that's who's feeling vulnerable or whether it's people male or female who are serving women you know they'll get a tool or a, you know something that you can give them to use and apply but um, let's 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 just before that go into you know about the book and all the communities of women you get to serve because you're not just doing it randomly right you're, you're definitely believing in a lot of women but being that leader and growing communities you're not growing lists like all the other people you're a major influencer for the community so give us a little bit about all the communities that you're involved in not just you know it's not just being like a uk thing so give us a little flavor of that and then we'll move into like a tool that you can share with everyone Thank you. So yes, one of the, the key communities that I'm part of is Global Woman. And I've been part of Global Woman for approximately the last three years. Started off as a member. And earlier this year, I was appointed as the Regional Global Woman Director for Accra, Ghana. So, you know, that, that's a real honor for me. And the reason why I chose Accra, Ghana is because that's where Mac is from. And, you know, I have family connections there. And because in Ghana, there are over, um, in terms of the, the female population, over 46% of the female population are actually business owners, but they're all local, local business owners. And their businesses don't last for longer than, um, on average, about five years. So bringing global women into Accra, Ghana, gives us the opportunity to give them the resources to help them to connect with other women globally, but also the opportunity to do business globally as well. 
And so I'm so passionate about the work that I do with Global Woman and having the opportunity to, you know, to serve in Accra because it's it's so much so much needed out there. And with Global Woman, and, and just going back slightly to the, the the question that you asked me before, was I I had the opportunity to be part of um, I don't know if you can see this the book project, which is called The Mind of the Female Entrepreneurs: How to Think and Act and Succeed in Business. And in this book, I I wrote my story. So a, a version similar to what I've just described to you. And I was able to articulate that in a way that I've never been able to do before. You know, somebody that left school with with no, you know, very little education to, you know, eating their, their, their lunch in the toilet to now, you know, um, heading up a, a community in a, in a country in, in Africa, which, you know, for me is, is a great achievement. But more importantly, it also enables me to leave a legacy for my children because they will have this story, you know, in print for all of their lives. They can hand this down to their, their children, their grandchildren, and, you know, for, for years to come. So, so the work that I do in, in, Did you get that uh, in warm, fluffy feeling again? <laughs> warm and fluffy, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, use, I use the book as a tool to inspire the ladies. And I use my story as well, because if I can come from where I came from and do all of these things, so can, so can any woman. You know, they just need to be around the, the right type of people, you know, like-minded people, people that are going to uplift them, inspire them. And that's what I do at my, my club meetings. We have lots of fun. Let's do and that now. Let's give them something that will inspire them, uplift them straight from the Linda Atram School of Empowerment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the tool that I'd like to share is, you know, being a, being a woman uh, and being a mother, always juggling between motherhood and business, is doing daily affirmations. Now, everyone can do affirmations, but... For me, I don't always have, you know, the whole hour, half an hour to sit down and, you know, focus on, you know, you know the incantations or whatever. So what I do is I record um, my favorite affirmations in my own voice with my favorite music in the background. So my favorite music in terms of relaxing is classical music. So I record that and I put that on, on my headset. So as I'm going around the house, if I'm, you know, putting the washing on, I'm hanging clothes up, I'm, you know, getting the dinner ready or whatever. If I don't have that time, then I, I always listen to that music and listen to my voice. So it's like me talking to myself, but positively talking to myself that helps to interact with those little voices that we all have that often tell us that we're not good enough or we're, we're fearful of stepping out of our comfort zone because we don't know you know, we don't have that certainty as to what the outcome will be. So having that voice, which is my voice talking to me, is a great is a great help and it's a great tool. And it's so easy and simple to do. And it's something whether you're a mother or not, you're a woman, a man, whoever, you know, it's it's all about, you know, having that that positive self-talk for yourself, telling yourself that you're good enough, telling yourself that you're courageous, you're brave, you're beautiful, you can do it, you've got it. You know, you can you can achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. And listening to that day by day, even if you're going to bed as, as you're, you know, winding down to sleep, putting that into your subconscious for me is is a great tool. Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I like the way that you build into that. The, you know, there is great science and evidence behind the classical music vibrating on certain frequencies so it goes through into your subconscious and drowns out the rest of the noise that can be happening and so on and then finally if there were you know someone listening in or watching this who is a mother who's in business if there was one thing that you'd want to share with them uh, like you know some of the messages and gifts that you've had on your journey as a mother who was in business with everything else what would that one message be and I'm sure there's many though. Choose whichever one comes to your mind. Yeah, thank you. So my one message would be being a mother is only one part of who you are. And your, your family deserve all of you, not what's left of you. And you can't pour from an empty cup. So make sure that your cup is filled with lots of love for yourself, 
as well as your family and lots of energy. Yeah. And that would be my message. Amazing, 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 amazing. I can feel that. Uh, so now what's next? What's next for Linda Atran? Right? So um, what's what's happening now? What's coming next? And then we'll get to the end about how people can follow your journey or even learn more from you. Yeah, so, so what's next for me in terms of mothers in business is continuing with the work, serving mothers around the world, building on my, my master mind classes, which we have um, every month we have a we also have a, a six month program so we're building up on on that and just um you know advertising that really well and in terms of global woman it's really about connecting with more and more women out there getting them onto the platform exposing them to all of the benefits of membership and just serve 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 that's that's what all i'm about yeah Brilliant. so how can people follow the journey how can people find out what's going on? And even if they want to reach out to you and ask questions and so on, what, what's the best way? Yeah, so the best way is to contact me via social media. I'm in LinkedIn under my name, Linda Atram. I'm also um, in Instagram under my name as well and in Facebook. So you can contact me there. And I have my own website called Mothers in Business if you want to connect with me regarding Mothers in Business. And you can download a free ebook as well from there. So that's on the website, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, right. Because we'll put all the links on there. And if you want to get that free ebook, go to the website and so on. So you're not on TikTok or anything with your kids and so on. No. <laughs> I saw I saw one with the whole family where all of you were in harmony and then I called Mac and went, Bro, you need some dancing lessons. <laughs> it's like you was like, he was like, oh, I was confused. <laughs> it's like, but it was so beautiful. And I, and I love that how you've all managed to have that beautiful harmony and you know every day is not like that but it's you know it's my opportunity to you know just say thank you to you guys for being that shining light as a family for so many other people because i know you're focused on mums in business but you as a wife as a mother you know and then all of you as a family like you know we all need to you know, of course we see the we see the show reel we see the highlights right but um mm -hmm those highlights are still part of it as well. And it's sometimes it's that, that you know, being that flame and that role model for other people. So thank you for that. And thank you for taking out time in your busy day and maybe taking off the headphones with the classical music to join <laughs> us today. And, um, and you've added a lot of value to all of our community. So Linda, thank you so much, bro. Keep doing what you do. And our community is here to serve you because we know you're serving others. But thank you for taking that time out. Thank you for your time. It's been a wonderful interview. Thank you. Really Brilliant. enjoyed it. Brilliant. Let's wrap it up as we always do. So there we had it. Linda Atram, watch this video again. Share this video with others. And if you've got value from that, please, please, please share a comment or you know, reach out to Linda and let her know how amazing she is. And as always, you've got all the links here for the foundation, whether and make sure if you haven't subscribed yet, if you're watching this on because someone shared you the link, come and subscribe to the Harry Singer Foundation YouTube channel where you will get more episodes of Empowering Women, but you will also be able to access the show Empowering Youth if you want to take that. And all the details on the website there, Harry Singer Foundation, and if you want to donate to the Youth Leadership Summits or the Women's Empowerment Programs, that's where you can do it. So once again, thank you for joining us. And I look forward to connecting with you on another episode of Empowering Women.